Okay, it's Mr. N here. We're going to do the chapter six in class review, then I'll be posting it up. So the first one here, it says, GX and HX are angle bisectors of triangle GHJ. Find the measure of angle XHG and the distance from X to GH. Since these are angle bisectors, what we know, and since these angle bisectors intersect right there, let's do that in a different color, since they intersect right there, this <coughs> tells us that we have the in-center. So this is going to give us the in-center. And since we do have the in-center, that means it's going to be equidistant from the sides. So in other words, this is the in-center. And since it's equidistant from the side, we measure the distance to be perpendicular. That means this will be congruent to that. So that's what you need to understand on the test tomorrow, is that when I say this is the end center, oh, that means this piece right here will be congruent to that piece right there. Those distances will be congruent. And I could put another perpendicular right there, and that would be congruent as well. So based on that, we can conclude that the distance from x to g is going to be 14.2 as well. All right, so now to find the measure of angle x, h, g. So this is x, h, g. Since these are angle bisectors, we know that that's going to be the measure of angle x, h, g will be 39 degrees as well. All right, moving on to number two. For number two, this is 45 degrees. That's a 90 degree angle. So that means this will be 45 degrees. Later, we're going to learn more about special right triangles. But for now, you know how to solve this. Since these are both 45, that means these two pieces will be congruent. So that means I have an isosceles right triangle. So then I could just use the Pythagorean theorem here and say this y will also be the same as x. So I could say x squared plus x squared equals 6 squared. Right? Because a squared plus b squared is c squared. So I end up with 2x squared equals 36. So x squared will be 18. So x will be the square root of 18, and we're not going to put plus or minus because we're dealing with side lengths. And 18 is 9 times 2, so that's just going to be 3 root 2. All right, for number 3, it says, is it possible to have a triangle with lengths 4, 5, and 10? Well, let's see. For a triangle, any two sides I add up have to be larger than the third. So if I add up the 5 and 10, is it larger than 4? Yes. If I add up the 4 and 10, is that larger than 5? Yes. But if I add up the 4 and 5, is that larger than 10? No. So 4 plus 5 is less than 10. It has to be larger for it to be. So the answer is no. Again, any two sides must be longer than the third side. Okay, for number 4, if two sides of a triangle are 16 and 22, what are the possible lengths for the third side? So the trick we said on these is to subtract them and then add them. So 22 minus 16 will give me 6, and then 22 plus 16 will give me 38. So my third side has to be between 6 and 38. That was a little trick that we had developed in class. Okay, for number five, we are taking a look at this triangle right here. And we are trying to determine what is the largest, which angle has the largest measure. Well, we know that here are my three sides. And by the, your book calls it the longer side theorem or whatever they said, however your author words it. But Basically, the longer side will correspond to the opposite longer angle. Now, you're looking at values here. You're looking at 3a. You're looking at 3a minus 5. 
between 3a and 3a minus 5, obviously this is shorter. Now I'm going to examine these two, 3a and 3a plus 7. Well, 3a plus 7, this will be longer. So this is the largest side. That means this angle will be the largest angle, so angle N. Okay, moving on to number 6. Let's slide this up. And on number 6, it says, in triangle KLM, if KL is 8, LM is 11, and MK is 12, what is the smallest angle? So let's draw this out. So we've got triangle KLM, and it says KL is 8, LM is 11, and MK is 12. Well, we're looking for the smallest, so the smallest angle will correspond to the smallest side, and the smallest side is 8, so that's the angle that goes with that, so that's going to be angle M. Okay, for number 7, we are asked to solve for N in each. Well, since these are congruent here, that means that is the midpoint. Since these are congruent there, that means that is the midpoint. So, this is the, the triangle mid-segment theorem. That means BC is twice as long as DE. So there's a couple ways I could set it up. I could say one half of 12N is 36. Or you could say this whole thing is twice 36, which is 72. You could say 12N equals 72. Either way, you end up with n being 6. For part b, it's the same process. We can say 2 times the 4n is the 6n plus 6, or you could set it up as 1 half of 6n plus 6 is the 4n. Again, I know that because this is a mid-segment because these are congruent on each end, so that is the mid-segment of it. So, solving this, we end up with 4n equals 3n plus 3. So if I, on this side, I could have said divide everything by 2, or I could here distribute this, either way to solve it. So this ends up being n equals 3. Subtract 3n from each side, you get n equals 3. All right, here we go. Moving on to number 8. On number 8, CA is a mid-segment, so that's a mid-segment, of triangle VTU. What is the measure of angle BCA? BCA, so this angle in here. If CA is 18, what is UT? Okay, so let's find this, this angle first. Since this is a mid-segment, it tells me, I know that these two will be congruent, those two will be congruent on that end. And since it's a mid-segment, that means it will be parallel to the base and half the value of the base. Since it's parallel, these are going to be alternate interior angles. So this will be an alternate interior angle to that, and they will be congruent since these two lines are parallel, since CA will be parallel to UT. And that's part of the mid-segment theorem. CA ends up being one half of UT, and they're parallel to each other. So that means the measure of angle BCA will also be 40 degrees. And now the value of UT Okay, so what this tells us is CA will be one half of UT. So if CA is 18, that's one half of UT, so UT will be 36. All right, moving on to number nine. For number nine, we need to fix this and just get rid of this eight right there. That should not be there, that's a typo. So. What is the length of XM? X to M is that right here. And then what is the distance of, this, of segment ON from segment ON to X? So that means this length right there is what we're looking for as well. Okay, well, 
if these are angle bisectors, we've already talked about what that does, and these angle bisectors intersect at the in-center. So since these are angle bisectors, intersect at the in-center. And how do I know these are angle bisectors? Because these congruent marks right in there. And since they intersect at the in-center, the in-center is equidistant from the sides. This is like number one that we just did. So that means XM will have a length of five. And so will, since XM is five, ON to X will have that same distance and that will be five as well. All right, let's move on to... Okay, so for this one, let's go ahead and we're going to fix this right here to say ZL. Let's correct that to say ZL because there's an error in it. Okay, so now, looking this over, it says if WX is four, WL is five and KW is seven, what is the value of ZL? All right, so what this is giving us, since these are medians, how do I know that these are medians? Because it goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, so these are medians. And the medians intersect at the centroid. Okay, so the medians intersect at the centroid. So that point right there is my centroid. And I know that the centroid is two-thirds of the distance from the vertex all the way to the median on the other side, which means WL will be two-thirds of LZ. So WL, let's take a look at that from Right here, I'm going to so LW, I can call it WL or LW, doesn't matter. This is two thirds the whole thing from L to Z. So that's the one I want to use. And I am told that WL right here is five. And that's going to be two-thirds of LZ, which is what I want to solve. ZL, LZ, it's the same thing either way. So this ends up being cross-multiply or multiply each side by 3 over 2. You get 15 over 2 equals LZ. Here we go. For number 11, we've got PS and RS, and we are to determine if one is greater than the other or if they're equal. All right, since this is telling me I have three congruent segments there, this triangle is equilateral. And if this is a 45 degree angle in here and that's a right angle, that has to be 45 in there. So that means this piece will be congruent to that piece. So since those pieces are congruent, those lengths are congruent, that means PS and RS are going to be equal to each other. For number 12, the measure of angle BCA. So BCA is this angle in here, and I'm going to compare it to DCA, which is that one right in there. So this triangle, ABC, is this piece is congruent to itself, and this is congruent to that one because they're both 9, but this angle here is going to end up being smaller than that angle in there. How do I know that? Because that's 20 and that's 21. That's the hinge theorem. Okay, It's actually the converse of the hinge theorem. So since this is 20, that angle will be smaller than this one. So this ends up being the larger angle. So DCA is the greater angle.
Questions there? Okay, almost done. All right, moving on to the last two problems here. It says, the in-center, again, we are told some information here, and the information is that it is the in-center. So since it's the in-center, I know all these distances, oops, not that one, these three, did it again, and this software, there we go. So this distance is congruent to that distance, which is congruent to that distance. So I know that those three distances are the same. So SW will be equal to the WR distance. So 10x will equal the 8x plus 6. And now I can go through and solve for x. And this ends up being 2x equals 6. x is going to be 3. And since x is 3, I need to find QW. Well, that's just going to be the same as what SW is. So I could find SW, that's 10 times this 3, which is 30. So QW will be that same exact value as well, 30. Yes, let's scroll this up. Okay. For number 14, again, I am told it's the end center, and because it's the end center, I know these distances are going to be equal. So the DW distance will equal the FW distance. So 5x minus 3 will equal the 12x minus 8. If you add 8 to each side, you get 5x plus 5 equals 12x. Subtract 5x from each side, you get 5 equals 7x, so x is going to be 5 sevenths. So that's what x is, but now I need to go through and find what the length is. So I can plug it into either one, I'll just choose the first one, so 5 times 5 sevenths minus 3 is what dw is, but that's also what we is going to be, because they are congruent. So 25 sevenths minus 3 is what WE is. We can find a common denominator, so that's going to be 7. So 25 sevenths minus 21 sevenths. And that's going to give me 4 sevenths for the length of WE.